Welcome to USMLE Memorizations. Today we're going to talk about Heart sounds, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, and patent ductus arteriosus. In what group of patients will aortic stenosis most commonly occur in? Aortic stenosis will most commonly occur in patients with congenital bicuspid aortic valve as well as patients that have degenerative calcification on their aortic valve due to age-related uh, calcifications. What are the characteristic sounds that can be heard in aortic stenosis? The sounds that could be heard includes a systolic murmur transmitted to the carotid artery. There is the crescendo decrescendo, which means crescendo is the loud and decrescendo means soft. So there is a loud and a soft type of murmur that can be heard. In what group of patient will aortic regurgitation most commonly occur in? Aortic regurgitation most commonly occurs in patients that have a bicuspid aortic valve as well as patients that have suffered from rheumatic fever. What are some of the characteristic sounds that could be heard in aortic regurgitation? Some characteristic sounds include a immediate high-pitched, blowing diastolic murmur. What group of patients will patent ductus arteriosus most commonly occur in? Patent ductus arteriosus, also known as PDA, most commonly occurs in patients with congenital rubella, as well as babies that are prematurely born. What is the characteristic sound that can be heard in patent ductus arteriosus? A characteristic sound includes a continuous murmur that sounds like a machine. What drugs are used to close a patent ductus arteriosus? Drugs used to close the patent ductus arteriosus include drugs like endomethacin, which is an NSAID. What are some of the drugs that are used to keep the patent ductus arteriosus open? Drugs that can be used to keep the PDA open include drugs like uh, prostaglandins E2 and prostaglandin I2. What does pulsus pravus etardus mean? Pulsus pravus etardus means small and weak, which means the pulses are weak compared to the heart sound, and this can be heard in aortic stenosis. For more information on this topic and for a full USMLE Step 1 review, click on the link in the description section below. So this was a quick video in question and answer format. These short videos are to help you recall and memorize high yield facts that are commonly seen on the USMLE. We recommend that you pause this video after every question and try to answer it on your own to see how well you can remember important information. If this video helped you, please be sure to share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. As well as you can check out our main YouTube channel, which is called USMLE Fast Track. And there you will find videos from the first date for the USMLE, step one. Thank you for watching.